Welcome to a Tuts Plus Quick Tip Screencast. My name is Cheryl Graham, and since it's summer, I'm going to show you how to make this dandelion silhouette using an art brush and a scatter brush. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is create this little plumed seed. I'm going to use some built-in Illustrator brushes. I've got a larger version of this over on the left so you can see it better. And I'll just take my brush tool, and then I have some brushes already loaded in my brushes panel, a two-point oval, a three-point oval, etc. And if you don't see these, you can click the flyout menu on the brushes panel and scroll down to Open Brush Library, and these particular brushes are under the Artistic Calligraphic set. So I'm going to choose a one-point oval brush, and I'll just start painting these little hairs. And you can do this very quickly. It doesn't have to be precise because it's a natural object, of course. And I'm just quickly painting little strokes of different sizes and shapes. That one's a little too long, so I'll undo that, and I'll paint a few more before I stop. I think these are just a little too small, so I'm going to change the stroke weight to 1.5. Even though I started out with a one-point oval brush, I can increase the stroke weight in the stroke panel here in the control panel. And that looks good. Now I'm going to create this little oval that holds the hairs together by using my ellipse tool and just drawing out a small oval. It's got a brown stroke and I need it to have a brown fill, so I'll swap those colors out and then move the oval in place. Now to create the seed stem, I'm going to use another brush, a three-point oval brush. First, I'm going to double-click on this brush in the panel to bring up its options. Down here under Size, you can see that it is indeed three points, and right now it's set on Fixed. You have several options under this menu, and I'm going to choose Pressure because I'm using a graphics tablet. I'm going to change the variation here to three points, which means that the size of the brush can vary in either direction by three points. So you can see in this little preview that the brush can be either zero, that's three minus three, or it can be six points, which is three plus three. So anywhere from zero to six points is going to be the variation based on the pressure. I can also adjust the roundness according to the pressure and the angle, and choose the variation on the right, just like I did with the size. I'll hit Return to save those changes. Now I'm going to paint that seedling stem using my brush tool, and I'm going to start with very light pressure to get a very thin stroke, and then press harder as I go down so the stroke will be thicker at the bottom. You might have to give it a couple of tries. I'm not crazy about that. I'm going to try again, and then apply more pressure as I go down, and that's a little too uniform, so I'll try it one more time, barely touching the tablet as I go, and then pressing harder as I reach the end. And that looks pretty good. Now this is a live brush stroke right now, but you can select it and go up to the Object menu and expand the appearance, which will turn it into a regular vector shape. And from here, I'm going to take my Direct Selection tool and make some adjustments. Now, of course, this is going to be really small in our finished product, but if you're a stickler for detail, you can adjust the contours of this shape just like you would any vector object. So I'm going to make this a little thinner at the top and a little more bulbous at the bottom. I can adjust some of these other strokes with the Direct Selection tool. I want them to connect with the ellipse in the center, and you can change the shape or the length of any of these while they're still live brush strokes. Now if I take my brush tool and hold down the Command or Control key and select one of these strokes, you can see that that brush is selected in the Brushes panel, so any new strokes that I paint will be painted with this very same brush and have the same appearance attributes, that is the color and the stroke weight. So I'll add a couple more strokes, and then I can go back to the Direct Selection tool and adjust these if I want. And that looks pretty good. Now those are still live brush strokes, so I'm going to select these all. I'll just marquee select this object, and then deselect anything but these brush strokes, and then I'll go back to the Object menu and expand their appearance. The last thing I want to do, and this is not really necessary, is open my Pathfinder panel and merge all of these shapes into one. And if I view it in Outline Mode, you can see that this is a single vector object. I'm going to use this smaller one that I created earlier, so I'll just hide these other two. 
Now, first we're going to create the scatter brush, and to do that, I'm going to select this object and just drag it into the brushes panel. I'll choose scatter brush as my brush type and click OK, and then I get a rather large scatter brush options dialog box. The first thing I can do is give it another name if I want to, and then I have options for size, spacing, scatter, and rotation. And right now you can see that those are all set to fixed, but I have several options under the pull down menu, and I'm just going to choose random on all of these. So I'm going to use these sliders on the left and right to adjust the size of each one of my seedlings. I'll move this to about 90% on the left, and then I'll make it a little bigger on the right. So the size can vary between 90% of the size of the original object or 115. I'll put the spacing on random as well and do the same with the sliders. And the spacing has to do with, as you might guess, the space between each instance of that object. Scatter refers to how far away the objects are from the path that you draw with your brush tool, and I'm going to set that on random as well. I'll move my left and right sliders to give me some variation, and then I'll do the same thing with the rotation. I'll put that on random too. So in this case, I can have those objects rotate negative 20 degrees all the way up to 32 degrees, and when you experiment with your own scatter brush, you can choose different settings than this. The rotation is relative to the page that the illustration is on, or you can choose to have the rotation relative to the path itself. I'm just going to leave it on page and click OK. Now I'm going to take my paintbrush tool, and I have that scatter brush selected in my brushes panel, and I'll just draw out a simple path, and you can see those objects scattered along it. I'm going to double click the brush in the brushes panel to change its options. I'll try to move this out of the way so you can see the brush update, and I have the preview button checked on the panel, and now I'll change some of these options. Rotation, for example, I'll make a little more severe, and you can see how some of those objects rotated when I moved the slider. I can change the size to make it look like some of the objects are farther away, and I can change the scatter to make those objects fall farther away from the path that I just drew. Anytime I make a change in the dialog box and have the preview button checked, you can see that update on the artboard, provided that the brush options dialog is not in your way. Now when I click OK, I'm going to get a warning. And this tells me that I already have a brush stroke with this brush applied to it, and it asks me if I want to apply those changes that I just made to this brush stroke, or if I want to leave it as it is. I'm going to click Apply to Strokes to update this one. Now I'll draw a few more with my paintbrush tool, and you can see now that I have just three brush strokes, but several different instances of that original object, making it look like all of these seedlings are scattering. I can move or modify the brush strokes, even rotate them, for a different look. Now to create a group of seedlings that are going to be attached to the stem of the dandelion, I'm going to create an art brush from this same original object. So again, I'll drag it directly onto the brushes panel. I'll choose Art Brush this time and click OK, and then I get a dialog box, and again, I can change the name of the brush if I want to, but the main thing I'm concerned with right now is the direction. You can see by this red arrow that the direction in which I paint with a paintbrush, that the bottom of the seedling is going to end up at the end of the paintbrush, but I want it to start the other way, so I'm going to change the direction here, and you can see that that red arrow is now pointing up instead of down. You also have several options, just like you do with a scatter brush, and these can be adjusted to your liking. I'm going to leave everything as it is right now, and click OK. I've already drawn my dandelion stem, and there's my art brush in my brushes panel, and I'll just start painting a few strokes to make it look like these are still attached to the flower. Usually dandelions are a little more uniform than this, so you could take the line segment tool, for example, and draw out a few straight lines with that, and then apply the brush to it. So I'm going to draw a few strokes with my line segment tool, and then I'll select those all and click on the brush and apply that brush to those lines. And that's how you can draw a dandelion silhouette using a scatter brush and an art brush.